Welcome to Catalan News. The pro-independence ruling coalition in Catalonia is committed to declaring independence this week. The Catalan Parliament will meet tomorrow, as well as on Friday, the very day that the Spanish Senate will vote on Article 155, potentially implementing the suspension of self-rule in Catalonia. The Chamber could decide to strip Catalonia of its autonomy without the presence of the Catalan President, Carles Puigdemont, who today declined an invitation to defend his case in the Senate. In fact, it was not clear whether he could do much to stop the intervention from happening. The main parties in Spain don't agree on whether calling a snap election would avoid intervention in Catalonia, and in any case, the Spanish socialists could not stop it from happening. This is because the People's Party has an overall majority in the Chamber. Here at Catalan News, we've got all the details. Let's start. The ruling party in Catalonia, Coalition Together for Yes, decided today that independence must be declared this week. It will be an act of legitimate self-defense, they argue, after the Spanish executive decided on Saturday to start the procedures to suspend Catalan autonomy. The Catalan government, though, has not yet unveiled its plans. Today, Puigdemont declined the invitation to speak in front of the Spanish Senate. Instead, he will address the Catalan Parliament tomorrow at 4 p.m. to discuss a response to Article 155. The plenary session is very likely to continue into Friday. His party wants him to declare independence, but it's not yet clear if he will do it or not. And if he does, what formula will he use? Once again, Puigdemont is between a rock and a hard place. No decision will make everyone happy, not those who want him to formally declare independence before self-rule is suspended, nor those who prefer him to adopt a more conservative stance. Just some days ago, calling a snap election seemed like a possible way out for Puigdemont. It's not that clear anymore. Parties at the Spanish Parliament today disagreed on what to do if Puigdemont calls people to vote. While the Spanish government and its unionist ally Ciudadans stress the importance of restoring legality, the socialists say that the self-rule suspension should be stopped if Puigdemont chooses this route. Celebrar elecciones eh, urgentes es una sabia decisión, pero hay algo que es muy importante, que es recuperar la legalidad. Porque todo lo que estamos viviendo en estos momentos en Cataluña, todas las situaciones que se están produciendo tienen un solo origen, que es la liquidación de la ley. Ese marco constitucional convoca elecciones autonómicas, no cabe ni política ni jurídicamente la aplicación del 155. Seguramente querrán ustedes que se garanticen el resultado y que no haya pucherazo. ¿De verdad el comité de sedición de Puigdemont va a ser el encargado de organizarnos las elecciones? La misma gente que cívicamente, pacíficamente salieron a la calle a defender heroicamente las urnas, saldrán a la calle a defender cívicamente y pacíficamente al gobierno legítimo y a las instituciones de autogobierno. If Article 155 ultimately gets implemented, one of the institutions that will fall under Madrid's control is public media of Catalonia. This, the Spanish government says, is to guarantee objectivity and plurality. The directors of Catalonia's public media, TV3, Catalunya Radio and the Catalan News Agency, held a joint press conference today and called the upcoming takeover a direct attack on citizens. They said that controlling Catalonia's public media from Madrid would be unacceptable in a European democracy, as well as an infringement on the right to receive objective, plural and balanced information. Uh, vamos a denunciar la, la intervención al Consejo de Europa. Esto supone que el Consejo de Europa pedirá al gobierno español explicaciones sobre lo que está pasando. Uh, pero um, an antes, um, creo que los primeros que tienen que reaccionar son los periodistas. Tienen que defender su, uh, su oficio. We're pleased to have another voice in the field of international journalism on our show with us today. We can speak to John Carlin, a British journalist and author who has lived in Catalonia for many years. He's currently in London speaking to us via Skype. Mr. Carlin, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Good evening. Good evening. You used to write for Spain's main newspaper, El País, but you were fired recently after publishing an article in The Times that was critical of the Spanish government. Would you like to comment on that? Um, I don't want to get into any details. Um, the only thing I would say is that um, El País clearly fired me because of things I had written on the Catalan question. In your article, you criticized the Spanish government by comparing it to a husband that hates his wife. 
You said that had the Spanish government allowed a referendum to take place, like in Quebec or Scotland, Catalans would have probably voted against independence and the current situation could have been prevented. What do you think is the logic behind Madrid's attitude towards Catalonia? Well, yes. Um, obviously, this incredible mess and this terrible uncertainty and this possible period of danger that we are facing could have been avoided so easily had the Spanish government agreed to do what the British government did and the Canadian governments did some years back, which is to allow um, a, an agreed, a fully agreed referendum on independence. Um, why does the Spanish government not do this? I think this has been observed by British historians who, who, who know Spain better than I do, at least certainly going back into the past, that there's a fundamental insecurity, a fundamental anxiety regarding the maintenance of the territorial sovereign integrity of Spain, something which seems to just generate um, sort of traumatic, irrational responses, um, a terrible fear of losing territory, and, uh, and just the very prospect of it is, is, is a source of like I say, tremendous nervousness and something that um, the Spanish government in Madrid, which is a very centralized notion of power, um, is simply not willing to contemplate, not least, of course, because of the fear of contagion of the possibility that then, uh, for example, the Basque country might seek um, separation from Spain too. This past weekend, the Spanish Foreign Affairs Minister Alfonso Dastis spoke to the BBC saying that the police violence footage from October 1st was fake news and alternative facts. As an external observer, how do you think international media sees the political dispute between the Spanish and Catalan governments? Well, I think that um, the, the battle over global perceptions um, at the moment is being lost by, by the Spanish government. And it's all really down to one very simple reason, which was the, the police intervention on the 1st of October um, on the, on the, event, on the in, in the event of the so-called referendum. I say so-called referendum because I don't believe for one minute that actually referendum is the right way to describe what happened the 1st of October in Catalonia. It was like a, it was more a mass demonstration accompanied by um, a great deal of street theater it was never going to be a binding referendum, um, so you can't call it a referendum. And the Spanish government could have responded by simply ignoring it. Uh, but instead, they decided to take the Catalan government's word, um, say, oh, yes, it is a referendum. In a, in a sense, they almost fell for the trap, into the trap. And, um, and they responded in a manner vastly disproportionate to what was going on. And, and the damage done there to the global perception of Spain is the worst damage that has been done since the time of Franco. And now the Spanish government's got a battle on his hand to claw back some public relations terrain um, as, a, as a result of that disastrously um, sh shoot yourself in the foot action. Thank you, Mr. Carlin, for your time. My pleasure. Pushed out of the limelight by the political situation in Catalonia, the investigation into what could be Spain's biggest corruption case in decades continues. According to the prosecutor, there is sufficient evidence to prove that members of the PP, Spain's ruling party, have been receiving illegal funds, although leaders of the party deny the existence of any alternate accounts system. Illegal funding of Spain's ruling party has been amply demonstrated. That's what the prosecutor investigating the Gürtel case, a corruption scandal involving the Spanish People's Party, has said, referring to evidence presented in court. She stated that the existence of an alternate bookkeeping system has been demonstrated by extracts of the party's former treasurer's handwritten accounts, in which he wrote down the names of those who made donations and of the members of the party that received illegal bonuses. These papers are, indeed, the main sources of evidence that the Spanish judge is using to investigate the alternate account system. The prosecutor didn't mention the Spanish president, even though M. Rajoy, his last name and first initial, appear in the papers. Indeed, Rajoy was called as a witness in the trial on July 26th and denied having received illegal money from the party. PP's leaders testified during the trial denied the existence of illegal funding. However, the prosecutor said that they don't have enough credibility. According to her, PP's leaders denied having received money from the alternate illegal system because it was embarrassing and would confirm that the alleged illegal accounting existed. 
If PP's illegal funding turns out to be true, it may represent the largest corruption case in Spain in the last few decades. However, Catalonia's political situation has pushed the prosecutor's latest conclusions into the background. Meanwhile, the intervention into Catalonia's finances is leaving its mark. The Catalan government has ordered banks to pay public workers their due salary despite Madrid's intervention into Catalonia's finances. Around 390 million euros will be paid out from the Catalan government's own treasury to public workers across the board for work already done, including teachers and health workers. But Barcelona cannot pay for everything. About 10 million euros to be spent on social products are being held back by Madrid's treasury, awaiting certification from the Spanish government to be actually paid to organizations. The debate on the future of Catalonia is linked to the future of its language. One major Catalan NGO campaigning for higher recognition of the Catalan language is in Strasbourg this week, where a European Parliament plenary session is taking place. The NGO is asking MEPs to support initiatives granting the Catalan language more presence in European institutions. The organization has also held a meeting with the Council of Europe to denounce that, in their view, Spain is mistreating the Catalan language. The rights of Catalan speakers are being violated by the Spanish government. This is what a major NGO that promotes Catalan, Plataforma per la Llengua, has reported to the Council of Europe. The organization made its case at a meeting with the head of the European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages. Spain signed up to the Charter in 2001, and the NGO says Madrid is not fulfilling its commitments. Justice is one of the hot topics. The justice system in Spain only uh, requires the judges and administrative staff, even in the Catalan-speaking areas, to know Spanish, not to know Catalan. According to the Plataforma per la Llengua, there are many other aspects that have not been observed. For instance, public servants are not required to speak Catalan and only 1.6% of official Spanish administration websites are completely translated into Catalan. The language in the media is also a matter of concern for the association. Catalan TV stations, radio stations are not allowed across the borders and in intra the same state, intra Spain. The Plataforma has also been holding meetings with MEPs to encourage them to take part in initiatives promoting the Catalan language. For instance, representatives have been asked to lobby the European Parliament President Antonio Tajani to recognize Catalan as one of the institution's official languages. What's more, they are also asking MEPs to demand that Spain and some European institutions reach new deals so that Catalan speakers can send letters to Brussels and get a prompt answer in Catalan. The NGO claims that it takes two or three more months to get an answer than if the letter is written in Spanish or English. So far, the reaction from some MEPs has been positive. So I, as a deaf person, have the same um, struggle and fight with my minority language, which is why I fully support Catalonia and the platform that they are looking to achieve. In terms of the Catalan language, we have to take into consideration that millions of Catalans speak Catalan language and they should have the right to be able to communicate with these institutions in their mother tongue. The Plataforma per la Llengua has also met with members of the Social Democrats. Liberals, the Conservatives and Reformists, the European United Left and Greens European Free Alliance. Let's move on now to culture, because in the heart of Barcelona, the Miguel Marcos Gallery is host to some unusual art. The exhibition is called Sculptures of the End of the World, and it's the vision of Catalan artist Álvaro Soler Arpa. The dramatic structures are made from wire rod iron and animal skulls. Through them, the artist warns that the earth is in peril through humanity's excess. Museum goers will be able to enjoy the display until November 30th. That's all for today. Before we go, we leave you with some images from the celebrated performance art festival Temporada Alta in the Catalan town of Girona, north of Barcelona. Enjoy an exclusive look at the Federico Garcia show about the life of the Spanish poet. It opens next month, and it looks perfect for art, theater, music, and dance lovers alike. Have a good night, and see you tomorrow. Si era el gozo, era el gozo. Y si era la tristeza infinita. Será de noche el oscuro. Hay por los montes y montes. Donde los huellas de la cueva. Baby, no gozo. Que 
galanes las esperan, bajo qué mirto reposan, qué manos roban perfumes a sus dos flores redondas. Nadie va con ellas, nadie, dos garzas y una paloma. Pero en el mundo hay galanes que se tapan con las hojas. La catedral ha dejado bronces que la brisa toma. El genil duerme a sus bueyes y el tauro a sus mariposas. 